Welcome back to another episode of Page Starter Podcast. I'm Lisa Ferland, and today I am joined by the amazing Vessi Agogovia. Vessi is the founder of Philly and Friends, which is an award-winning children's lifestyle and educational toy brand. She is an author, and that's really what started all. We're going to start with, with her book, but she's also an entrepreneur and an advocate and recognized among the top 100 entrepreneurs to watch in the UK. She's truly amazing. She has over a decade of experience in strategy and operations, and she crafts products with creativity and strategic insight. Vessi champions, champions entrepreneurship, diversity, and parenting, and has shared her expertise in publications like HuffPost Parent, Mother Mag, and others. She's committed to giving back and serves as a school governor and sits on children's charity boards while also mentoring emerging entrepreneurs in the baby and child industry. Welcome, Vessi. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. Yes, wonderful. Okay, so let's start at the beginning with how Philly and Friends started and really, um, you know, became what it is today. And I'm going to uh, include the link to your website so people can visit it, but also share some screenshots of all the beautiful products that you have on Philly and Friends. But give us a little history of like where it all began. Oh, thank you so much. Very kind of you. Um, And my journey has been very unconventional, but similar to many other mothers um, I have been in contact with over my over the years. And so I had a corporate career working as a consultant, and then I had my daughter. I got pregnant with my daughter, and I had her in 2017. And obviously being a first-time mom, being excited, you know, I started reading up about uh, child development and, you know, just how I could make the world a better place for her. And I found that I just started thinking more about her and the world that we're living in than myself, you know, and I wanted to read books to her and started the research, okay, what books are out there? What can I have, uh, you know, um, what can I give to her um, to ensure that she has a good start in life? And then I discovered the inequality in play. I realized that at the time, a lot of the books didn't have um, main characters that that featured children that looked like her. But then the stories were very one-sided. Um, they were incomplete stories. They were very stereotypical. And I thought, my goodness, I'm going to be raising a child in a world that doesn't recognize who she is. You know, and when you think about it, that's not the message that people want to pass across, but that's the message we pass across with the toys and the books that we have available when they're not representative of the people that actually consume them. And so I, I started thinking about what I wanted to do because I really do believe that you have to be the change you want to see. Mm. And so I one day woke up with a story in my head, um, very passionate about actually raising confident children through the power of representation and also letting them be who they want to be. And so I had this story in my head. I thought, oh my goodness, I want to write a children's book. I have this story. Um, who do I see in the mirror? And then I spoke to my family, my husband, my siblings, and they were like, just, you know what, just go for it, do it. What's the worst that could happen? And here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> the founder of this amazing brand, which has ever is so uh, toys and puzzles and uh posters and cards and just so many products educational and creative products to give kids a chance to see themselves in you know in every profession and you know learning and it's it's a kind of thing that i that i'm sure that you wish your daughter had when she was you know growing up so you created it because you didn't see it there right Yes, exactly. And so she's actually the muse of 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 the main character, Philly. You know, I say she's a strong girl who believes she can be anything she wants to be. Um, I remember growing up, I was very academic as a child. And so I absolutely loved maths, physics, chemistry and those sort of subjects. But I never realized that I was creative until I wrote my children's book mm -hmm. in my 30s. And so I... I believe that we want to, when raising children, we want to help them believe that they can be anything they want to be. There are no limitations, you know, based on race, gender, nothing limits you. You want to be a minor, you can be a minor. 
And that's really the ethos of what we're trying to do and achieve. Obviously, there's a, there's a talk about diversity in the playroom because that's very important to me because I believe that children need to be able to see themselves and others represented in the toys they play with, the books they read and the media they consume. Um, but yes, it really just started as my gift to her. I always say that it was my love letter to her to let her know that she's special. And I didn't realize that I was writing a love letter to many children around the world around at the time when I started. Yeah, but it's been a beautiful journey. Um, mm. When I started, I thought it was going to be a series of books. I didn't realize it was going to, I thought maybe three books at the top, <laughs> at to, to, maximum three books and something. I didn't realize I would be on this journey, but I'm absolutely loving it. So tell us more how it went from books to puzzles to cards. Did you have customers asking for these things or like what was the journey into like the product development? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things that one of the things I try I tried to do is I tried to create things that I myself needed. And so like with the book, I wanted a very affirming book that lets children know that they are special regardless of what they look like, but it's what's on the inside they, that counts the most. And that's the ethos of the book. You know, she goes on a journey to discover what makes her special. And she realizes, actually, my good heart and curious mind is who I truly am. And so that's the message of the book. And um, and so that started it. And with the book, I said, thinking, OK, I want to do more with my daughter. I want to affirm her. And the idea for the affirmation cards came in. Mm -hmm. The affirmation cards are two sided. One, the child is affirming themselves. And I had a lot of feedback from parents saying, okay, how do I speak to my child? What do I say to my child when I'm affirming the child? And I said, actually, we have a two-sided card. The front says um, something and the back is for the parent or the carer to affirm the child. And so we released that in based on feedback we're getting a lot from our consumer, our customers and our community, but also in terms of what I wanted to do with my daughter as well. And then I also had my son. And so the boy, you know, having a boy in the mix, obviously I said, thinking, okay, what do I do for the boys? A lot of boy moms will come to me to say, this is just for girls. We need something for our boys, you know? And so every single time, every single step of the way, before the dolls, the dolls came out because my daughter wanted, wanted a fairy doll for Christmas. My husband and I went round everywhere trying to get a doll that was black and a fairy doll that looked like her and that was beautiful as well because I love really beautiful things <laughs> um and we really couldn't find any we found one and she didn't really like it and so I, I set out to design one myself I thought okay I'll design one for her because I'm that mom <laughs> I designed one I thought actually I also do a ballerina I designed it, got someone to make it. My mom saw it and said, Vessie, you have to do this for other moms like you who are looking for something similar. These are so beautiful. You have to make it available to people. And at the time, I would ask the community, what do you want to see from us? What do you know? And I just kept seeing dolls, 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 dolls over and over again. And I thought, okay, wow, we're all on the same page. Yeah. You know, so that's how the dolls came, you know, came to light. Um, and then with the puzzles, just speaking to children, one thing I always say is I don't like the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because you become many things along the way. I studied engineering at university. I became a management consultant. Um, I became a chartered engineer. I, you know, and now my daughter says I'm a doll maker. You know, mm -hmm. I've become so many things that, along my lifetime. And when I was younger, I didn't believe that I could be many things. And so the idea for the puzzles based on different occupations came from my desire to ensure that children believe that it can be anything they want to be. Mm -hmm. They are able to see it and say, oh, there's an astronaut. I can be an astronaut. There's a lawyer. I can be a lawyer. There's a minor. I can be a minor. Just, just the knowing, because we know that children learn so much from play and yeah. they learn from their minds, their, you know, the opportunities that are available to them. And I just want them to be able to know that there's so many opportunities. While you play, you're dreaming, you're being inspired, you're being empowered. And that's how we've that's how we've always created our products, based on feedback, based on the desire to ensure that our children are empowered. Love it. I love it. If I can have a suggestion, I yeah, think sure. it would be fantastic to have paper dolls with the different outfits of various careers. And then they can 
put them on as well so they can because I loved I loved paper dolls growing up and putting on the different costumes or the different dresses or the different yeah. whatever they are and uh, that was always so fun for me to like have just all the different possibilities yeah. you know and to dress and then play with the dolls and then have like this little this little make-believe I'm absolutely smiling because paper dolls has been on my list <laughs> for so long yes it has and it's something I really want to do. Um, and so just to hear your feedback, I'm just like, okay, yes. Well, yes, you know, you're on the right track. <laughs> you know, when you get the confirmation that the things that you want to do are being requested, because you, you yeah. have to create things for people, not just what you want. Um, it also needs to align with the desires of people. So thank you so much for that yeah. confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, my daughter is 10 and she is very much in the explore phase. So she wants to try so many different things. And it's such a great age. You know, she's kind of out of like the, the doll age, but she's not quite, but she's, but she's still exploring. And so, you know, a paper doll, I think is that nice bridge um, in the ages where she's old enough to cut, you know, and cut out the, the clothing and try things on but she's not quite you know small enough still yeah. to you know play with it with a doll doll um so I think yeah there's a lot there's there's a nice there's a nice uh area there to bridge the gap I think and uh, thank you so much age, I'll yeah. definitely come to you for more <laughs> yeah, of course of course <laughs> So amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. And of course, the dolls are available for for boys and girls. Um, and I love that you have you have so much uh, representation there across all all of your products. So you know, uh, based on that, you know, and you mentioned your your career in you know the, the corporate world and in strategy. And um, how has your focus changed, or do you think that your values have changed? since becoming an entrepreneur and kind of being able to create your own path? Hmm. That's such a very good question. Um, I think the key thing, the key difference I see in myself is my desire to see change in the world. Um, I've gone from bottom line thinking to like your bottom line thinking, thinking about um, self-development, which is still good to thinking about other development, others' development, so developing other people. Mm -hmm. And when I say developing other people, the children, how can we ensure we're raising actively inclusive children who are kind? I always say that um, if all I do in this world is raise kind children, I think I've done enough. Um, I love that. And so, so raising kind children and children who are inclusive, I want my daughter to and my son to see a child in the playground in the corner lonely and go up to them to say are you fine why are you alone do you want to join us that's my desire you know and so I'm thinking about how do we develop develop the um the new the coming upcoming generation but also the parents the teachers you know how can we ensure that you're raising confident children how can we ensure that your classrooms are inclusive so I've I'm now thinking of other people and how to make the world a better place um I'm doing that strategically still, um, but uh, but it's just a very different focus, um, mm -hmm. very very different focus. I do I do like the fact that I had a corporate career because it gave me tools, you know, a net network that are very invaluable. Um, I still remember some of my colleagues, my my you know my bosses. Um, it was a good foundation for where I am now. I mm. think. Yeah. 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 I mean, and this all stems from this, like you said, this very simple concept of, I just want to raise kind, inclusive yeah. children, how, you know, tell us a little bit about how your business has grown from that. I mean, it starts off with just one kernel of an idea. Did you have like this question or this, like just idea of like, okay. And then you find yourself in a completely different place, you know, but it's still based on that core value. Yeah. If you had told me I'll be doing this seven years ago, I would have laughed so hard, <laughs> you know, because my idea had always been to have a corporate career, to grow that, to become, you know, to be the best in whatever I was doing um, and just to give, you know, give back in that sort of way. Um, and so to see myself here now, I'm just like, wow, my goodness, how did I get here? But it, it is interesting because I look back on my life and I've always been this way inclined I just didn't express it in the way I'm expressing now just with children 
Um, I have a younger sister, even just how I was with her, very much, very protective, ensuring that she's confident. I'd always had that in me. I just didn't know that it was something I would do as a career. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think it was possible as a career, which is why I'm doing the things I'm doing with the, you know, with the puzzle, occupation puzzles and cards. Um, and yeah, so I'm here now. I, I'm Even when I started the book, I wrote the book, I didn't even think it was going to become a, an educational play and learning brand. You know, it was just, I, I, I really want to raise confident children. And I think books are the best way to do it, you know, so let me write this book. You know, but one thing I'm always open to is suggestions. And, you know, I that, that's why I really like the growth mindset because it leaves you room for growth, really. Yeah. Um, knowing that there isn't just one bus stop, there are many bus stops and you just keep growing, evolving and learning. I'm quite, um, I, I work quite hard. So when I do something, I, I give my 200% in into it. And so I, I guess I just keep going and going and going. Um, but yeah, it's been, I, I, I love it. I love what I do. I get the chance to go into schools, um, to read my book, um, to speak to the young children about identity and how we're different, looking at our fingerprints. But I also speak to the older girls or older kids and children on identity, on the topic titled, Who Am I? You know, and... It's just be, it's just a wonderful journey. It's different from what I expected, but I absolutely love it. It's so it's so important what you're doing because I mean, we're all looking for a sense of belonging. And I think that, you know, kids and, and adults too, but you know, kids are on that journey of self-discovery and becoming. And so it's so good to have someone there like help them reflect and help them think about yeah. it and help them be like a little more, you know gracious with themselves say like you can be you know whoever you want to be I mean that's it's so hopeful when you're so young and I think we need to tap back into that when we become older adults as well be like you know life is a journey like we're not just one fixed uh, thing you know life isn't over when you hit you know whatever magical age you think life is over at you know we can continue to reinvent ourselves and exactly totally I totally agree with that um I remember when I give the talks with 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 the older children I always ask them at the end, tell me one thing you're going back with. And what I hear so much, it's, it really warms my heart. Things like, I realize that I, I don't need to be anyone else but myself, or I realize that I'm enough. Or, you know, I realize that there's nothing wrong with me. And just hearing them say that, because, you know, the adolescent stage is very difficult for children, you know, particularly young girls sometimes, you know, it's, so just reminding them that, you know, who they are is very special, their background, where they, where they come from, you know, who, what they like, their passion, their skills, mm-hmm. all those things make them who they are and they shouldn't despise it and despise it. And that's the ethos of our brand, raising children who are confident in who they are, able to see themselves reflected and believe they can be anything they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Now tell me more about how you help other women build their businesses. Um, Who, who do you work with? Who do you mentor and what type of impact are these businesses having? Yeah. Um, So particularly I work mainly with women. Um, A lot of them are female founders and it all started with people contacting me to see, I want to, I have this children's book idea. I want to, uh, you know, I want to write a children's book. What do I do? How did you do it? And I was just doing it. Sometimes I spent two hours on the phone speaking to people, but obviously it, it wasn't sustainable anymore because I was also running a business. So I had to come up with a, a proper program, you know, a mentorship program where it's we, we speak for maybe one. If you have one question, you come to me, ask that question for one hour. I'm happy to pour out all I have for you or you go through a three-month program, you know, and a lot of them are, they have ideas and they just don't know how to start you know, or it could be that they've started, but they want to, you know, how I've been blessed enough to receive a lot of PR, you know, on my brand, you know, and awards. And they're like, okay, how do I get PR? I don't, I cannot afford a a PR agency at this point. How do I get PR? And I'm able to walk them through that journey. Or how do I decide my suppliers? It's basically people who have small businesses or are looking to start small businesses and they want to know how do I get on that journey? You know, how do I put myself out there? 
more recently, I've had people contact me about um, personal branding. So how do I ensure that my voice is heard? How do I ensure that people are able to see me within um, within the industry to build a voice in the industry? And I'm working with them on that. Um, I say what I what I say is a lot of the work I do is on identity and clarity. Mm -hmm. So identifying what your business is or what your personal brand is or building clarity around what you're currently doing, which interestingly is very in line with the, biz the business I, I do as well, Philly and Friends. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's how I work with people. And, and that that all aligns, you know, you're like, I'm I'm helping young people and business people like, get back in touch with who they are and what, what their values are and then take that through. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. So did you yeah. learn all of this on your own self-taught going through things or did you yourself take either courses or have a mentor yourself when you were first starting out? So when I was first starting out, um, I was combing through the internet looking for you know information on launching a book what do I do you know just reading up online a lot of it was very self you know I gathered a lot of self-information then I stumbled up on a Facebook group for children's um book authors and then I came across Lisa as well so I came across you <laughs> well, yes <laughs> me but also other I people I'm sure <laughs> exactly <laughs> And then you were so helpful as well. Honestly, it was it was such a blessing finding and working with you at the time, you know. And it's just been, I I, I can be quite relentless and you know resilient, I should say. Um, and just really going in, digging deep. What what's out there? What do I want to do? Who has done it before? And what can I learn from them? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and just pu pushing through. I always say that there's a lot of information on Google. Um, you just need to search, you know, and reaching out to people as well. I When I first started, it would take a lot for me to reach out to someone who I don't know to ask for help. And now I've just been like, you know what, the worst they will say is no, mm -hmm. you know, but most times people are very, very happy to, you know, give a lending ear or just, just help be helpful or, or point you in, the, in a different direction. And so don't be afraid to reach out. That's something that has really worked for me and really helped me um, on my journey. Um, yeah, but I would say as seek mentors as quickly as possible. I wish I did that earlier than I did. Um, when I launched my book, I launched it like in two weeks before launching. I just told <laughs> people about it. <laughs> you laughed. Yes, I know. Um, and now I know that there's a whole process yeah. to launch in a children's book you know most times the big brands do six months if they have the marketing budget and they're doing six months why am I doing two weeks with my you know 100 followers <laughs> like it you know it's like yeah so there's a lot that I've learned over time um but I wouldn't take my learning experience for granted I think it's been such it's been so valuable to me it makes my story my story Mm -hmm. you know and I'm able to give back and tell people don't fall for that pitfall you know that don't fall for that you know that's you shouldn't do that so yeah that's well I, I think what's great you know and and when we worked together you know you were also con you know, considering company and it just wasn't it wasn't right but like I would say that um the best part about books is that they never expire so you have you know and, and all your products I mean your products are aren't going to expire. They're, they're these timeless pieces. Um, so they can kind of be sold whenever. So if you have yeah. a launch and it doesn't go like you planned, you can evaluate what happened, be like, Hey, like what, why didn't it go as I thought it would, um, what can I do different? And then can kind of launch yeah. again or, or repeat it in some way. So, I mean, there's no harm in, uh, you know, relaunching or, or taking a new spin or, um, evaluating what worked or what didn't work. So, I mean, it's, it's really great that you, you kind of did, you didn't stop yourself. You know, mm. you didn't say like, okay, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. Wait for this magical moment. Cause that's also a, a big pitfall that a lot of people have. I mean, you got started and just kept going, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. so many authors hold themselves back and like no I'm not ready not ready, not ready it's like well at some point you have to you have to jump yes and you're so right because I actually launched the book four days before I had my son so when you talk about timing that was the worst yeah. possible timing I was on the I was on the bed I was in the labor ward on the bed sending emails and thinking what have I done to myself 
this is madness, you know, like, um, so there's, like, I, I totally agree with you that there is never a set time. There's never a good, really a good time. You know, you just keep, need to keep going. Um, you have an idea, believe in it and just keep going. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You have a good idea, believe in it and just keep going. So, you know, I have, um, what are, if you could, if you could distill it down to like three core things that you think if someone is in, you know, the children's book or children's toy area, anything to deal with like children, what are like the three main tips that you would give someone or three core pieces mm -hmm. of advice you would give to someone who is, you know, pursuing either establishing a brand or, you know, a, a small business? Yeah, hmm, that's a very good question. I think with the children's market, what I would say is remember that you are actually selling to the parents as well as the children, because um, who who has the money to buy? <laughs> it's the parents, right? Um, and they need to know that whatever they're buying for their children, they align with it. Um, a lot of people are very conscious about what their children consume, you know, it, not just with food, but, you know, like media, toys, books, all of that. So ensure that you know who you are selling to, who is your market. One of the things that people, sometimes we, we make, the mistake we make is that we want our products to be for everyone, but that's not really possible. You know, right. the only thing that's really for everyone is water, <laughs> I think. And even with water, people have different brands. Some people like Volvic, some people like, you know, like everyone exactly. has, you know, so just define your target customer. So what type of parent are you are you selling to? What type of um, child? Where do where do they sit? Who are they? What are, what are their values? You know, define all those things, and those things will feed into the type of products that you're creating. The way your social media is the voice on your social media. Um, my 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 social media brand is very similar to myself. It's very soft and it's very soft and um encouraging. Um, and that's fine. There's some vo voices that are very strong and firm and, and, you know, it's, it's okay to be who you are, you know, and let that shine through because there's a parent who would like that for mm -hmm. their child and then they will support and go for it. Uh, you know, and you can't be everything to everyone. And I think the moment you decide and understand that you can't be everything for everyone, your people will come to you and, and they will come in math, like in, you know, and, you know, and so don't be afraid to define who you sit with and where you sit. Um, what else? I think, I, I, I just believe in the power of starting. I, I just, I, I, I really loved what you said earlier. You know, there's so many people with ideas and they just sit on the ideas. But if I never started, I would never have had the puzzles, for example. I will never be speaking to children, you know, and just impacting their lives positively. And, you know, um, I love the look on my daughter's face when she, you know, she says, I'm Philly. You know, she's so, you know, happy to be that. And if I never started, not, not that anything would have been robbed from her life. She would have still been fine. But it's just an extra thing I've added. I feel like I've added to her life and to the world. Um and you never know until you start. I mean, even if it doesn't work out, you started and you learned something from that experience. So just start. The third thing I would say is reach out. I'm happy for you to reach out to me, reach out to Lisa, reach out to anyone you see out there that is doing something similar or even if it's different, but something that you like and just see how you can learn from them, mm -hmm. um, how you can give back to them, how you can just be part of their ecosystem. It could be just their mailing list, you know, just reach out because you're able to learn, um, you're able to give, you're able to learn a lot by reaching out. And there are a lot of mistakes you can avoid by learning from someone else's mistake. Uh, yeah, so that's what I have to say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, it, you know, especially your first point of, um, it was really of, of defining your niche and really speaking to your values and and who you are and what you want to promote i think so many people are afraid to niche down but that goes into the growth mindset versus fixed mindset which you talked about earlier where you have you know this growth mindset of like there's always 
plenty. Like there's always more, like you don't have to worry about, oh, there's, you know, I have to appeal to everyone because I'm trying to reach the most people. It's like, that's, that's actually, you know, the, the worst thing you can do is try to appeal to everyone, like try to appeal to a very small group. And then other people will either see themselves in it or they, they won't. And you want to repel people who aren't going to align with your brand anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And then, you know, finally, what, what has been the biggest challenge that you have faced? I mean, right now it's all very swimming and everything sounds great. Um, but what, what has been the biggest challenge for you in terms of building Philly and friends? Mm, that's such a good question. I think there are many things it's, it's great, but obviously like with building any business, you know, there would be moments of, struggle moments of challenges moments of oh my goodness what have I done to myself um but it's been a beautiful journey I'm a, I must say um I think it's the dog is it the dog that looks very you know well and then underneath you see the 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 feet struggling to move um and that's <laughs> and I think that's that's how it is most times in businesses you see them they look good but a lot of work is being done um to ensure that things move in terms of myself, I think it's a few things. Um, one of the things is I had to get used to being out there. I really wanted to build a brand that was just without myself, but I realized that there was a lot of work that I needed to do with the children and, you know, just building a voice around raising confident children, raising inclusive children. And, you know, in order to do that, I had to be out there, um, it started, it even came to me, like when the BBC came, I wanted to interview me. That was my very first time. And I I just felt like, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> you know, I I wasn't looking to be the face. I, I just wanted to do something good for the little ones. But I've realized that I've impacted so much more um, by just being there. And I always see that there's this, um, there's this scripture that says, who lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, you know? You put it on the hilltop for all to see. And it's basically saying that you're all light. There's a light you have, Lisa, and you're shining it through the world, through your consultancy, you know, through your crowdfunding. And everyone has that light. And if you don't shine it, you wouldn't be impacting. Like, if you didn't shine your light, I wouldn't be here today, Mm -hmm. you know, with this, having this conversation with you. And it's just me remembering that I am light. I have light I carry the same way everyone has light that they carry. And I have to shine it to be able to be a blessing to other people. Um, and so that's how I've been able to overcome that challenge. Um, another one is brand awareness. You kind of have to constantly, and I, I guess it, it, it is in line with being out there. You know, there's a lifetime value of customers and you have to ensure that you're constantly reminding people, you know, you have that your funnel of people coming in and be knowing that, like, for example, we, we, I launched the book five years ago and let's take my daughter. My daughter is six now. The book is zero to six. So she's coming out of that funnel. And a lot of the parents who came in are coming out of that funnel. So I need to always constantly make sure that I am getting new customers with brand awareness, you know. Um, and so that's, a, you know, another thing that I have to think about. How am I constantly bringing people in to ensure that they're hearing about the good work we're doing with our business and our products. Um, Funding as well could be a challenge, you know, growing a business, a product business, you need and require capital to be able to, you know, make new products, ensuring that we are applying for grants, you know, winning grants. Um, And yeah, so it's it's all those little things that you you need to run and operate a business. Um, They've been challenging, they've been challenging times, but thankfully, we've been able to think of different creative ways to ensure that we are still relevant <laughs> um, and that we're still going. I love that. I love that. And you are a, a testament to how hard you are working to keep your business going, you know, in terms of like searching for all of these grants and awards and, you know, funding. Um, have you pursued uh, equity funding at all or or startup funding and taking on investors is that something that you've considered um so i've considered it i've just not decided okay. <laughs> um <laughs> i think it's such a it's such a long journey i think one one thing i heard is that it's easier to divorce than 
like part ways with an investor yes, you know I, <laughs> <laughs> and when I heard it I laughed so much because I thought oh, my goodness but it's such an important decision especially when it's a brand that means so much to me it also has like the social impact in that I for every product sold we sponsor a book into the hands of a, an under a child from an underserved community so there's a lot of um for me it's a pur- it's a purpose-driven business and so ent- entering into any relationship with the business it needs to be properly thought of it's not just a business that I want to sell off you know like mm-hmm. I, I I not that I, I I would never I'm not saying ne- never say never to anything but it's <laughs> feel like I would I would oh, exactly <laughs> for the right people <laughs> Exactly. But for me, it's just, it needs to be thoughtful. And so I'm taking my time um, with that. And if I do go down that route, it needs to be the right investor who understands what we are trying to achieve and to ensure that we're able to achieve that that with them on board. Uh, Yeah. But in terms of the funding so far, it's very much been um, grant funding and we've, we've actually won a bit of that. So we're quite pleased and happy. Um, my next thing is probably to consider angel investors, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I think it's so important. I know you know you're in the UK. I'm I'm based in Sweden, and Sweden has a lot of um, grants and uh, awards for uh, dealing with um, underserved communities or so uh, really foreign owned businesses with social impact so it's like a very talk about a niche talk about a niche down you know anyone who is looking to you know raise a inclusion or diversity and have a social mission um there's like you know, specific funding set aside for those businesses so i think that you know it's it's wonderful to be able to find these but it can always it's yes. always a challenge you know to apply for all these opportunities all around so yeah. Definitely, definitely something to consider. Anything else you want to mention about Philly and Friends or what, what's coming next, if you have any um, anything on the horizon? Um, yeah, so so in terms of the um in terms of the puzzles, we do have quite a number of like um what do they call it now? O- occupations. And so we'll release a few more of those. There's a particular toy that I I'm working on at the moment, which I think is very exciting. I wouldn't say it yet, just because it's not just it's not done yet. Um, but that, and we're hoping to go into tech soon. So oh, okay, yeah. so uh, keep yeah, so keep your eyes peeled, and yeah, hopefully we'll see how that goes. Um, but we just really want to be able to educate and empower our children um, through the power of play. Um, we say that we are where play, learning, and diversity unite. And that's because the most the best way to teach our children is through play. Honestly, they while they're playing, they're learning, they're, you know, they're being encouraged, inspired. And that's what we aim to do um with our products. So keep your eyes out and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yes. Thank you so much, Bessie. It was wonderful. Thank you for joining as always. And uh, yes, I will please everyone go visit phillyandfriends.com and all of the, the dolls and the toys and the puzzles and all the amazing work that she is doing for everyone, oh, it's all children. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. It's Thank been an you. absolute pleasure. Thank yeah. you.